Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. A few housekeeping items before we get started. There is a Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen that you can use to type questions to our presenters at any time during this session. And if you do have questions for a specific college, be sure to mention that college within your question. Your camera and microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is also just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional ones as well. This presentation is also being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same site where you registered. Now I'll turn it over to our first college, which is Mississippi State. Hey guys, my name is Hilda Karos. I'm an admissions counselor for Mississippi State University, the flagship research institution of the state of Mississippi. <clears throat> we are located in Starkville, Mississippi. So that's Northeast Mississippi. We're about two hours south of Memphis and two hours west of Birmingham. What that means is that we are near major airports. So if you wanna come visit, if you're gonna be a student, you'll have no problem getting to Mississippi, even though it is a little bit away from where you guys are. We, um, this is the middle of campus. It's always this pretty, the grass is always this green. It's a really nice place. We are, um, Mississippi State was founded in 1878 as Mississippi A&M Agriculture and Mechanical. We've since grown tremendously. We now have 22,000 Bulldogs on our campus, um, it, but we do have a 20 to one faculty to student ratio. So what that means is that while you get that big school feel, you also get that like small intimate feel in the classroom. The average student at Mississippi State has um, average incoming freshman, excuse me has a 3.5 GPA and a 26 on the ACT. That average student is also set up for some nice scholarships. I'm going to talk about that in a second here too. We are a D1 SEC school. So that means that if you're also looking for really great athletics, we've got you covered. So we also have a bunch of academics. We've got about 200 different programs for you to choose from, spread across eight academic colleges. We are known for the STEMs, but we have way more to offer than just the STEMs and Mighty Engineering. Um, every single one of these colleges has nationally ranked programs within them if the college itself is not nationally ranked. We all we are all about learning by doing, and that's where research comes in. We are top 100 in the country for research. <clears throat> so that means that when you come to Mississippi State University, you are going to do the thing that you came to Mississippi State to do and not just learn about it. And that's in every single one of these colleges. And research isn't just writing papers about things. It's helping your business get started. It's working in cancer research and a bunch of cool things like that. So some of the research that we do right here, what you're going to see is on the screen is the supercomputer. We have the fourth fastest supercomputer in academia. Um, and we are actually getting a second supercomputer as well. Our undergraduate students have access to work in this kind of stuff. We are also home to, we have an entrepreneurial center on our campus and the entrepreneur center is ranked number six in the world for their research. They do everything to help students get businesses started. That's everything from helping students set up um, a business plan to helping students find fundings. We even, we've had students graduate millionaires from going to the East Center. We've also had tons of student CEOs graduate from the East Center as well. You don't even have to be a business student to have access to that. You just have to be a bulldog. So that's pretty cool. And if you are entrepreneurial minded, make sure to take advantage of that. Um, we also have one of the nation's best cybersecurity program. With this cybersecurity program, you're getting the opportunity to work directly with the NSA. So you could not be working with a better agency to get that experience. You're also getting a certification through the NSA. So that's really going to make you stand out um, when you are going into the workforce and cybersecurity is growing extremely quickly. So like you want to come out and be at the top of your game with that. And our participation um, and cooperation with the NSA is going to really help you stand out. We are also um, home to the largest unmanned uh, unmanned aircraft lab in the country. Um, it is a national center of excellence for the FAA. And so what that means is that our students are working with drones and they're setting the rules for the world of drones, which hasn't been done before. So our students are literally at the forefront of this life changing technology. And speaking of life changing 
technology. We also have a Center for Advanced Vehicular Studies. And what they're doing right now, they're doing a bunch of projects, but one of the coolest ones right now is that they're working on producing the first all electric autonomous SUV. So not just like a car that can drive itself on autopilot like a Tesla, but a car that can totally drive itself on and off the road. We're really excited about that. And these are just some of the research experiences that are happening on our campus that our undergraduate students are getting to participate in. So that's pretty cool. So if you come to Mississippi State, you're going to have plenty of chances to really um, learn by doing. I know by now everybody wants to be a bulldog. So here's how you apply to Mississippi State. We need three things from you. We need your $40 application fee. We need your high school transcript and we need your test scores if you have them. If you're a senior right now but haven't applied, we are accepting students. We are still scholarshipping and we are able to overlook you not having test scores due to COVID this year. We are on Common App Coalition and we have our direct application. We have no essay. So it's a really simple application. We get an answer to you in about two weeks. On top of all of that, we've got a bunch of scholarships to offer you to help you become a Bulldog. So that average student with a 3.5 GPA and a 26 on the ACT is guaranteed $14,500 a year for four years. That means that your tuition comes down to right around in-state tuition. Our scholarships are a matrix. They range from $8,000 a year to $23,000 a year. We also have competitive scholarships and programs like um, the Veterans Waiver. So if mom or dad served in any branch of the military, we'll go ahead and waive the out-of-state portion of tuition and award you scholarships at the in-state level. So that's a little bit about Mississippi State. Um, I hope you consider checking this out because everyone looks good in maroon and white. Hail State. Thank you so much for that presentation. Up next we have Ole Miss. You're muted, Clarissa. Apparently I was muted when I did that, so I do apologize, everybody. Um, up next, we have Ole Miss University. Jamonda, you are also now muted. Please excuse our technical difficulties, everybody, as we get all this sorted out. We still cannot oh, we... hear you, unfortunately. Unfortunately, we still cannot hear you. Ole Miss, if you would like to sign out and try signing back in, we will go ahead and move on to the next college and then we'll come right back to you if that's all right. So up next, we will go to University of Alaska Fairbanks. Hi, thanks everybody. Um, technical difficulties. It is a classic uh, quarantine move. Uh, Oh, hopefully Jamanda will be back soon. Uh, my name is Andrew. I'm a regional admissions counselor for University of Alaska Fairbanks. I am based in California, uh, but I actually am a UAF alum. I lived in Fairbanks for three years, so I'd be happy to talk with you about uh, moving up to Alaska from out of state and uh, going to school at UAF. Um, but yeah, I'm here in California to better serve students like you from California and Nevada. So if you are not familiar with UAF, we are a small public research university based in Alaska's interior. Uh, so that means up here towards the middle of the state. Uh, that means that you're going to have a particularly unique living environment, complete with snowy winters, uh, winter temperature lows of negative 40, even negative 50, summer temperature highs of 80 and sometimes even 90 with the midnight sun, and an opportunity to see uh, wildlife, including moose, right on campus, as well as a chance to glimpse the aurora borealis from campus as well. It's really, really uh, a great adventure. 
I always like to tell students that at UAF, you're really going to be getting all the best parts of college, but in the farthest north US city. So you're going to have everything that you have in your traditional college experience. You're going to have a residence hall, your cafes, libraries, uh, student rec centers, uh, everything on campus that you um, are excited about, but with a little bit of a twist. So if you look up here, this is what your backyard is going to look like, uh, you know, just sprawling land with uh, some spruce trees and pine trees waiting for a bike ride, a hike, whatever it might be. This is what the sun looks like in December around the winter solstice. And then you'll notice that our student tradition is getting a photo in front of that temperature sign when it reach, ne reaches negative 40. And uh, these students are being brave and bold and stripping down to their swimsuits. I myself always keep my clothes on for those photos, uh, but hey, uh, different strokes for different folks. And then here's a shot of downtown Fairbanks with the Chena River running through it during the fall. Some highlights about UAF. We are Alaska's flagship university. We're a little over 100 years old. We are a land, sea, and space grant university, as well as a world leader in climate, in climate research and Arctic research. Uh, our campus is relatively small, teetering on that small medium size, a little over 5,400 students. And then the city of Fairbanks itself is about 90,000 people. So really small town vibes, tightly knit community, uh, both on campus and off campus. And then we have that nice 10 to one student to professor ratio. We do offer WUI for all. So coming from California, coming from Nevada, you will automatically receive the Western Undergraduate Exchange Scholarship. Uh, and then also if you happen to be either de the dependent or a spouse of an active duty military member or a veteran, you will actually qualify for resident tuition. And I'd be remiss if I did not mentioned that we have a lot of great Thai food in Fairbanks as well. Student life is very diverse. It's very exciting. There's always stuff going on, uh, especially during the winter. We wanna keep our students active and get them outside. Uh, we always like to tell students that UAF is not a party school, but we are a social school. Uh, so residence life always has events going on. We have 25 miles of hiking trails right on campus. Uh, we have over 2000 acres of campus land. Uh, we have a thriving live music scene, both on and off campus, as well as, you know, a campus newspaper, radio, literary magazine, a museum on campus, lots and lots going on. And then an active Nanook uh, Recreation Student Rec Center, where you can rent equipment for that uh, ice climbing wall, uh, that uh, hike, that snowshoeing adventure, uh, whatever it might be. I always like to let students know too that no matter what your path is, uh, we have a pathway for you at UAF, whether you're going for just an endorsement or a certificate, even if you're going for a PhD. And uh, I also like to mention to students too, just by coming up to UAF, just by moving up to Fairbanks, Alaska, you are gonna stand out in that future job interview. You're gonna stand out in your future social interactions. People are gonna be impressed by you and interested in you. And it's always a great conversation starter. Uh, as I mentioned before, we are a research university, so uh, our STEM majors are going to be our most popular majors. I like to point out a couple of facilities that we offer. Uh, we have the Geophysical Institute. Uh, you might have heard of HARP. Uh, we study weather patterns, uh, the aurora borealis, snow and ice, things like that. We're also the only university in the world to have our own private rocket launch site. We also offer opportunities if you're interested in being a firefighter or an emergency responder. We offer students paychecks to, uh, to fight fires and respond to emergencies while they're completing their degree programs, whether it's an associate's or a bachelor's at UAF. If you're interested in this, I know that California, it's really hard to get experience fighting fires. So come up to Alaska for a few years, fight fires, get your degree, and then go back home or go wherever you want to after that, or even stay in Alaska. So if you are uh, coming up from California or Nevada, you will be offered this WUI tuition rate right away with tuition and fees right around $13,000. But as I said, if you do happen to be the dependent or the spouse of military or a veteran, uh, then you will actually qualify for the in-state tuition rate a little under $10,000. Or if you complete your degree online with us, you will also qualify for that in-state tuition rate. We offer a couple of scholarships right off the bat when you're admitted to UAF. Uh, the Nano Pledge is between one and $7,000 every year. And then we also have private scholarships you can apply for as well. Our applications are still open for fall 2021. We are waiving ACT and SAT test scores. Uh, if you're in high school right now, you do not have to send us your test scores. And uh, fall 2022 applications will open June 16th. Thank you so much. Again, my name is Andrew. I'm a UAF alum. I was an out of state student. I'm a former instructor. So please uh, text me, email me. I'd love to talk with you about Alaska and welcome to Nanook Nation. Thank you very much, Andrew, for your presentation. Now we'll bring back Ole Miss. Hopefully we have technical difficulties solved, so I will turn it over to Ole Miss now.
Okay, can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can. Wonderful. Great, great, great. So sorry about that. All right, so I am Jay Monda Roy, and I will be representing the University of Mississippi, affectionately known as Ole Miss. Um, so we are the second smallest school in the conference. We're home to just about 22,000 um, total students, um, but just shy of 17,000 undergraduates um, on campus currently. We are just one hour from um, southeast of Memphis. Um, we are also the definition of the quintessential small southern college town of approximately 20,000 residents. Um, the students, of course, double the size of that town. So you're looking at about 40 to 50,000 um, people in in, in all. So consistently ranked as one of the nation's uh, best small towns and top college towns, okay? So average class size is 34 students. Uh, we have less than 5% of those larger lecture style. Some classes as small as eight to 10 students. Our average ACT hovers around a 25 and a 3.6 GPA. Now we have the state's highest graduation rate and retention rates recently set a university record um, with 86.8% freshman to sophomore year retention rate. So we have over 90 different majors, 120 of those programs of study. We are nationally ranked accountancy, business, education, and pharmacy programs. Um, also home to the state's oldest engineering program and public law school in the state's uh, only medical, dental, and PT and OT programs at the state's only academic teaching hospital. Now we offer a few competitive special programs. Uh, we have our Sally McDonald Barksdale's Honors College, the Croft Institute for International Studies, federally funded Chinese and Arabic flagship programs, and among many others. Now, students can apply for uh, via our in institutional application or the common application, which opens um, usually around July and August. Uh, we admit on a rolling basis, but the sooner students apply, the better. We have instituted a test optional um, admissions policy for fall 2021. However, we do not recommend that students submit test scores as the vast majority of our students, of our scholarships uh, require them. Now, three facets to scholarships and financial aid, um, academic merit scholarships, um, automatic with a 25 plus ACT, 1200 SAT, um, and a 3.0 GPA. Um, we also have special programs and scholarships application, and um, the priority deadline is always going to be January 5th. Um, we also uh, encourage you guys to uh, complete your FAFSA. Now, the total cost of attendance for non-resident students is about $40,000. Um, U.S. News and World Report uh, has ranked us a top 50 best value school. Now, as far as a campus visit, um, we would love for you guys to come and visit. Um, we are doing in-person visits right now. Um, many have said that if you don't fall in love with Ole Miss, um, if you don't want to fall in love with Ole Miss, don't visit their campus. Um, now, we're, of course, we're offering both in-person and virtual visits right now. Um, we don't win as many uh, sports championships um, as our colleagues claim, but we win in a different way. Our campus beauty is one of the best in the nation. Um, now, I would love for you guys to come see why Ole Miss is ranked as the third national, um, three national publications as the most beautiful college in the country. Um, so if you find, our, find yourself close to Oxford, I would love for you guys to come and visit um, and we'll pay for you to stay on campus um, in our hotel and show you what we have to offer. Thank you. Thank you so much for presenting. As a reminder to our participants, if you do have questions for any of the colleges on here today, please do not hesitate to use the Q&A feature and we'd be happy to answer your questions. Up next, we have Alaska Pacific University. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Campbell Cry. I am an admissions counselor at Alaska Pacific University in Anchorage, Alaska. Oops. There we go. Um, I am from Minnesota and just moved up to Alaska about six months ago. And I can tell you that coming from out of state, it's been a smooth transition and I've absolutely loved this state of Alaska and know you will too. 
So we are a small private liberal arts and science-based institution located in Anchorage, Alaska. Um, we are just about south of UAF, who you heard from just a few minutes ago. Um, and we are right next to University of Alaska Anchorage. Um, we are just a little bit of a different feel, uh, a little bit smaller. We're about a fifth of their size with just about 500 students. So a very tight knit community, um, very welcoming and you'll feel right at home. So just a little bit of history. We once were called Alaska Methodist University in 1960, and then became Alaska Pacific University in 1978, expanding and growing. We are a Native American Indian serving campus. So we highlight and focus on the culture here, the native tribes in the state while offering rigorous academics. And we have a second campus called Kellogg Farms, which is, um, started by Luis Kellogg and it's about 900 acres of land about an hour from here in Palmer, Alaska, um, offering students for the outdoor studies and sustainability studies, students to uh, use those resources out on that land. Uh, as I said, we have about 500 students, including our undergraduate and graduate students. We have about an eight to one student to professor ratio. So you do get that tight knit community feel um, while being in Alaska's largest city of about 300,000 300, uh, people. So we have 78% uh, of our students that are coming from within the state of Alaska. However, we draw students from 31 other states and countries. So you'll get to know students from all over. Um, and we do have three on-campus housing options. So we have uh, North Atwood, which is a suite style. We have single and double suites. And then we have Siegelhorst and University Village, which are more of apartment style suites. Students are required to live on campus the first two years just to kind of get that full experience and fully be immersed in our community. And then I mentioned we are an Alaska Native American Indian serving campus. So a little bit of life in Alaska. Um, Andrew from UAF talked kind of about this, but I'll just kind of highlight some of this stuff in Anchorage. So breathtaking views, you'll have mountains all around you, a lot of opportunity for adventure, everything from hiking, skiing, um, fishing, rafting, kayaking, to still having the city life of being near your Starbucks and Target. We still have major roads um, and getting that city life feel. We have a lot of rich history. So we have about 229 federally recognized tribes uh, and you'll get a lot of cultural events on campus and through Anchorage. And you'll see moose, bears, um, salmon, goats. I actually just saw a moose as I was leaving campus today, probably about 15 feet from me. So a little too close, but um, they are harmless um, most of the time and campus security does a great job of letting students know where they are on campus. Um, and then you do get a quiet tucked back campus as well. So we are a place based experiential learning campus. What that means is that we want students to experience life outside of the four walls of the classroom, getting to experience being whether it's on a mountaintop doing class or maybe in an internship opportunity or being in a clinical setting. Uh, we have 12 undergraduate academic programs, which I'll talk about just in the next slide. We will keep re information relevant to Alaska. So whether that's learning about our climate, our history, the uh, ecosystems that we're surrounded by, everything um, from that. And you'll get a lot of support and respect from the faculty, from the different support services on campus. Um, and yeah, a lot of our programs are science and liberal arts based. Um, so some of our bigger programs right now is our nursing program um, that will be starting up um, in just a couple months here. We also have our marine and environmental sciences program. We do have an octopus lab that makes the program unique. We have about eight octopus on campus um, or octopi and students get to work in that lab. We are about 15 minutes from the ocean as well and a lot of neat fishing towns. So students will get a lot of opportunity. Um, counseling psychology is another big one and a lot of these are offered as minors as well. Uh, so we have a dorm life, you'll get an RA, a lot of events planned in, through your RA and through different clubs on campus. The meal plan, we offer a gold and silver meal plan, which can be used uh, in the dining hall on our coffee cart and then through Costco. And then we have a lot of events, everything from movie nights, open mic nights, different cultural events to um, different, different hikes, maybe going on a fishing trip all sorts of stuff. And then we do have an indoor rock wall and um, 
uh, indoor saltwater pool. So the application process consists of submitting the application. There's a $25 application fee. However, we do offer fee waivers. So reach out to us if you are in need of one. You'll submit your high school transcript. We just look for a 2.5 or higher GPA, but we do have admissions appeal processes as well. We will be in touch with you, either myself or one of my colleagues. Um, and then we'd love to have you either do a virtual visit or stop on campus as well. Um, tuition is the same in state and out of state. So you see that listed there. You will receive a merit-based scholarship based on your GPA as well as an out-of-state discount of $1,000. Um, we for sure encourage you to fill out the FAFSA to see what you qualify through that. And our financial aid office is happy to help you through that. Um, but that's all I have time for. So we'd love to have you here and for sure follow us on social media and um, reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation. Up next, we have University of Alaska Anchorage. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I am excited to share with you a little bit about the University of Alaska Anchorage. My colleagues did an excellent job introducing you to a little bit of Alaska and even a little bit of Anchorage. Uh, but I'm going to talk a little bit about um, specifically UAA. So um, UAA, the University of Alaska Anchorage, is located in Anchorage, Alaska, which has a population of approximately 300,000 people. And we consider ourselves to be in what we call the urban wild. So you'll have access to all of that beautiful nature that Andrew referenced a bit. Um, but still being in the more southern part of Alaska, the climate is a little bit more um, temperate. Uh, and also, uh, as my um, colleague from APU referenced, uh, we are in the city, so you have access to shopping, dining, entertainment, a little bit of a downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, and importantly, the state's major airport is in town, so if you're coming from California, it can actually be faster to fly to Anchorage than it is to drive across California. So it's maybe not as far away as you have thought that it is. We have approximately 12,000 students on campus, making us the largest uh, um, university which, in Alaska, which is giving us some opportunities to uh, get uh, a little bit more engaged with things like athletics and student life. We actually have over 100 clubs uh, on campus, and we still maintain a really excellent faculty-student ratio of uh, 1 to 16, which means that about half of your classes have less than 20 students, which if you're coming from California, Oregon, Washington area, that's pretty unheard of at a public university. And we think that this balance is why um, we were ranked number one for a long-term return on investment amongst our peer institutions um, by the Center on Education and Workforce. And essentially what that means is that after graduation, our students are finding gainful employment and our tuition is reasonably priced because we are a public institution um, with an open access mission. And so uh, we also participate in the Western Undergraduate Exchange and we are um, awarding that to all of our students coming from the West. And so I do this little comparison uh, just to give some context that it can actually be less expensive for you to attend uh, the University of Alaska Anchorage than it is to attend a public university in your own state. So it kind of dispels that myth that it's more expensive to go out of state always. Um, in just your first year, you could potentially be saving over $7,000. And so uh, if Alaska is calling to you, if uh, Anchorage is the right fit and the price is, is right, um, then you're probably wondering, but do they have the program that I'm interested in? And we probably do because we are a, a me medium-sized comprehensive institution. We have a wide range of programs um, with a hundred different degree options uh, across our five different colleges. And if you are coming in not quite sure what you want to study, UAA can be a great place for you because exploratory studies is actually one of our most popular freshman majors. Uh, and then we have first year advisors that can help you really navigate which of these degrees is going to um, be the best fit for you. So business, engineering, uh, natural sciences, uh, humanities, arts, uh, anthropology, psychology, economics, uh, these are all options available to you and more. Um, 
But if you're looking for some adventure, UAA is also an excellent place for you because we do value that experiential learning. Um, and experiential learning is something that we do throughout our, all of our uh, programs. For example, some of our geology students have been known to be helicoptered to their site locations. You can take elective courses in things like ice climbing and dog sledding and adventure isn't limited to campus. We have opportunities for study abroad and national student exchange that can really expand your story all over the country and all over the world. So you could take a semester and study in Puerto Rico or Las Vegas or Hawaii for potentially the same price as UAA tuition. Uh, so that's a really exciting opportunity that's not available everywhere and UAA is really proud to offer it. We hope that you will continue to look in more into UAA and discover all that we have to offer. We have amazing virtual events now that um, we've kind of trans transitioned to uh, this virtual year. Uh, we have some things called fireside chats coming up, um, junior day. Uh, you can learn more about them on our website. If you wanna just have a meeting with an admissions counselor and get a virtual tour, you can do that. And it's called a green and gold visit. And you can always, of course, contact me. If you're ready to submit your application, you can still do that. We have rolling admissions. Right now, we don't have an application fee. The whole application takes about 15 minutes to complete because we are an open access institution. We're not requiring a personal statement or standardized test scores. Uh, but if you have questions about how to complete the application, I'm happy to help you and walk you through that. I look forward to helping you all become future sea wolves. much for that presentation. Our final college for this session is Soka University of America. Hello everyone. I'm very happy to be with you today talking about Soka University of America. And we will begin our presentation. Soka University, we are a small private liberal arts college in California in Southern California, Orange County. We are located um, just about three miles inland of the Pacific Ocean is really nice. Soka is a mission-driven university. Our mission is to foster a steady stream of global citizens committed to living a contributive life. This was given to us by our founder 20 years ago upon Soka's founding. Soka is the Japanese translation of the concept value creation. So our idea is that by being a Soka student, you're creating value in this world. Key facts, we are in the community of Aliso Viejo, um, in Orange County again, we have 450 students, a defining feature of our campus. 40% of our students are international, coming from over 30 different countries by design. We're 100% residential campus, so students do live all four years um, within our community. We offer a singular major, the BA in Liberal Arts, but we have five concentrations, which allows students to focus. We have a study abroad requirement, we allow all of our seniors to do a capstone research so they're practiced and ready for independent research projects. We have a seven to one student to faculty ratio and our average class size is 12. Soka believes in a dialogue discussion based learning environment. We also compete in NEI athletics and offer uh, merit and need based financial aid. Our general education focuses on comparative study of Eastern and Western thought. Soka comes from a Japanese pedagogy. Um, our sister school is Soka University of Japan in Hachioji, Tokyo. So we really focus on cross-cultural experiences and curriculum. All of our students are required to study abroad. It's part of our language and culture requirement. We offer Spanish, Japanese, French, and Chinese as languages. Students will do one full semester in their third year in a place that speaks that language. So we have about 15 cities. They are living with host family or local roommate or in an apartment and they're enrolled in classes um, at a host university. So it's a full immersion program. And again, it's really important for our students to be able to have that um, cross-cultural exchange. And because it is a graduation requirement, it is built into tuition. So SOCA makes up the difference. Um, and for any undocumented folks, we have domestic alternatives. We offer five concentrations in environmental studies, humanities, international studies, life sciences, and social behavioral sciences within our bachelor of arts and liberal arts degree. These concentrations are not preset, so students get to determine the combination of classes in order to get what they want out of their education to prepare them for grad school or their future careers. 
in terms of our student life, again, all students do live on campus. You can see the little graph of what a uh, room looks like for our first years. Uh, it's always you and a roommate sharing one bathroom. We have um, many things to help students kind of make the most of their experience, so including shuttle, full-time mental health counselor, health center, disability services, which coordinates cross campus, academic and personal accommodations, um, career development and internships programs, as well as a full meal plan. Our founder really wanted students to have a good place to sleep and you know, good food so they can focus on studying. Um, student life is important with only 450 folks. 30 student-led clubs, lots of affinity groups to um, for all the different identities on our campus, opportunities for leadership within student government or, or as an orientation leader, a resident assistant. Most students have an on-campus job to build up that work experience. We offer lots of service engagement as part of our goal to create global citizens and people who lead contributive lives, um, as well as recreation programs at the Performing Arts Center. Uh, oops. My apologies. Here are some sample posters put on by our residential life community for different programs. They're really focused on identity, um, mental health and mental well-being, as well as community building and um, uh, life skills. We compete in the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics as part of CalPAC for soccer, cross country, track and field swimming and women's golf. Students who are competitive athletes can receive scholarship for these teams and we have national qualifiers compete as a SOCA Lion. Our admission process opens August 1st for the following year you wish to apply. So this year um, you'd be applying for fall 2022. Our early action deadline is November 1st. It is non-binding and our regular decision deadline is January 15th. We require an application, $30 application fee or fee waiver, official transcript, Scripts, English proficiency requirement for those who have not completed high school in the US, two letters of recommendation, two mandatory SOCA essays, list of extracurriculars, and this last fall we were test optional. We'll be making that determination this summer if we'll continue in that way. In terms of financial aid, our tuition was about $32,000 this year and room and board is 13, um, but SOCA offers generous financial aid. In terms of need-based aid, families who make under $60,000 will get the full SOCA Opportunity Grant, which covers the entire amount of tuition. Families above that, it's a sliding scale. And we do this for our international students, our undocumented students, and our domestic students. We offer merit scholarships from five to $15,000. They're renewed all four years at SOCA, plus continuing students can get um, uh, full ride scholarships based on academics. Athletes are awarded directly by the coaches. Um, there's athletic scholarships. We participate in the federal loan program, but also have a SOCA loan program. And we offer federal and state funding. So 98% of our students last year received financial aid. Um, we are a team of six. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us um, and see us on social media. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for giving us a little bit more insight into your respective institutions. I'd like to invite all my fellow panelists to come back on just to answer a quick question, just to give you students a little bit more insight to their favorite things that they offer. So the question we are going to be answering is, what is your favorite event or tradition on your campus? And we're going to start with Mississippi State. Thank you. I love this question because my favorite tradition is the cowbell. So we are the only school that's legally allowed by the NCAA to bring in artificial noisemakers to our games. So that makes for a really incredible environment. I don't know if you guys have ever heard one of these. I'm not going to ring it, but they're really loud. And 80,000 of them ringing at once sounds like music. So it doesn't matter how many people you bring to the game. You're never going to be louder than 80,000 cowbells. So that's my favorite. Ole Miss. Hello, my favorite tradition is definitely our hotty toddy chant. Um, if you guys have ever been to any of our um, games or any, you know, athletic events, that is our that is our number one thing. It's very exuberant, very loud um, and lively. And so that's my favorite. I won't say it. I'll let you guys uh, look it up. But um, definitely our hotty toddy chant. University of Alaska Fairbanks. Yeah. Um... Uh, one of my favorite traditions is uh, we have an outdoor rock climbing wall and an indoor rock climbing wall. And in the winter, we spray the outdoor rock climbing wall. It turns into an ice wall and it has like several lev levels. So if you just want to like channel your inner Jon Snow and just climb a 
like an ice wall, you can totally do that. And it's just kind of like symbolic of Fairbanks in general. Like we take advantage of the terrain and what we got in the winter. And then in the spring, it all melts and everything is bright again. Alaska Pacific. One of my favorite, I guess, events slash experiences is called Expedition Alaska. It is for our incoming students. Um, they have a choice to do it, but students get to go before classes start in August on a five day camping and uh, rafting trip on the Yukon. So you drive up and you go with faculty and staff and get to just fully experience the outdoors. Um, students that I've talked to have said like, even if it's been raining the whole trip, they had the best time of their life and just really got to know students really well and um, get to know what APU is all about and outdoors. Um, so yeah, really unique experience. University of Alaska Anchorage. Uh, I'm gonna go with hockey. I think that it is awesome to have a hockey team on campus uh, and we are really proud of it. And um, it's a really excellent way to get involved with all of our student life. And Soka University. For me, I love, um, we, ha we have a statue of Gandhi that students will decorate when it is their countries. A lot of our international students will come and decorate for um, like an international um, independence day, which is really cool. Awesome, well, thank you everyone for joining us today, both participants and panelists. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback you can give us. This is also just one of many sessions happening over the next few months. Be sure to sign up for additional ones as well. And in about a week, this session will be at that same website where you went to register. Thank you again for joining us and have a great evening.